groups, he now spends his time revealing the many secrets he was exposed to and trying to wake humanity up to the stranger reality just beyond the veil, and I can't wait to hear about it. Stuart, my man, welcome to THC. Thank you, Grant. It's nice to be here. Well, man, this is a real treat for me because I've been listening to your lectures for quite some time. I heard you on Coast to Coast something like seven years ago, and ever since, you've never failed to surprise me with weirdness. Ha. Well, you know what they, they say, I put the freak in frequency. <laughs> That's funny, man. you got to have a sense of humor about some of this. And I know there are a ton of topics that we could discuss, but I'm really interested in hearing about some of the big secrets concerning the history of Atlantis and the Hollow Earth and the various races and hybrids that are involved with this story. It is a huge topic. We could spend the whole day on it. But I guess the best place to start would be Lumeria and Atlantis, or can we go back even further than that? Well, we could go back further even to the Lyrian star system where all humanity began eons ago. And it was there that the reptilians from the Draco star system attacked uh, and caused the dispersal uh, through the rest of this galaxy of uh, human type. Um, and that created many civilizations and many different star systems. Um, and on this planet, of course, um, uh, the uh, refugees from Lyra, uh, Lyra actually uh, colonized two planets in our solar system, one being Mars, which at the time was very Earth-like, and one uh, planet that was uh, in the further orbit from Mars, which was called Maldek, uh, which was also very Earth-like. And uh, the reptilians, uh, when they discovered these colonies, uh, many, many uh, millennia after the destruction of Lyra, uh, sent in an ice comet uh, to our solar system, which was pulled by a manufactured black hole as a, as a uh, propulsion system, if you will. Wow. And uh, that, as that ice comet entered our solar system, it caused the planet Uranus to start to flip on its axis. It's the only known uh, planet in anywhere that instead of going west to east in, in its spin actually goes north to south because it was uh, knocked off of its axis. It then Weird. the ice comet then continued uh, towards the center of the solar system where it uh, between the gravitational pull of Jupiter, uh, the ice comet, and the sun, it caused Maldek to explode, which is why we have a, an asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. As it continued, it pulled the oceans and atmosphere off of Mars, which is why it has a thin atmosphere now. And then it headed towards uh, the Earth, which was at the time completely covered in water. Even the atmosphere is filled with water. And the ice comet and the Earth went into a, uh, a rotation around each other, which caused the oceans on the Earth to polarize and freeze, which is why we have the ice caps and land that appeared, uh, which became Lemuria and Atlantis. And then the Earth was pushed from the second position around the sun to the third position where we are now. And the ice comet took up the second position around the sun. And the ice, because of the light refraction from the sun, started to melt and caused cloud cover. And that became the planet Venus that we know now, which is why it's wow. covered in uh, clouds. Huh. Yeah. And then uh, a little bit later on, when I say a little bit, I'm talking centuries, uh, the reptilians drove a vehicle back into this uh, solar system to colonize the Earth and parked it in orbit around the Earth, and that is the moon that we have now, which is actually an, mm. an artificial object, uh, which is why only one side faces the Earth at any time. It does not spin like a natural object. It only acts as a parked vehicle, uh, which it is. And that's why we only have a light side and a dark side of the moon. And from there, they colonize the largest continent, which we now know as Lemuria. Weird. So Lumeria and Atlantis, this is uh, a story, you know, we've here in myths and legends for a long time. 
Uh, a lot of people hope that there's truth to it, and apparently there is. But is that so? Is that where Earth comes into play? These two land masses, Lemuria and Atlantis. Well, it was actually uh, Lemuria, or some countries in Asia call it Mu, uh, that um, the reptilians colonized. And as we know, the reptilians were androgynous. There was male and female in one body. And they lived here for many, many millennia on their own. They were the only occupants of this planet. And it wasn't until thousands of years later that the refugees uh, from the Lyrian star system came to the Earth and colonized what we now know as Atlantis, which would have been in the Atlantic Ocean as we know it now. Interesting. So were they... They were a whole different species altogether. Were they more like the humans we are today? Yeah, exactly correct. The, the Lemuria, or the I should say the, uh, the, those who became the Atlanteans, were very pure human, not what we have now. These were much taller, uh, much lighter skin, lighter eyes, lighter hair, much more etheric in their uh, natural uh, capacity. Uh, but, of course, when you have uh, mammalian species and a reptilian species, they don't really belong in the same environment. So, eventually, there was conflict between Lemuria and Atlantis uh, for eons of time. Um, and, eventually, Lemuria was destroyed by the Atlanteans because they had technology which disrupted the geomagnetic structure of the Earth and caused Lemuria to sink into what now has become the Pacific Ocean. Dang. So, at this point, the reptilians, I've heard you say before that they went into the inner Earth? Correct. That's correct. Uh, what people don't understand is that in planetary science, which I have outlined in my book, Blue Blood, True Blood, uh, the Earth and planets like it, Mars, Venus, etc., uh, these were formed when uh, uh, molten material was ejected from its sun. And as the molten material spun in the coldness of space, uh, the centrifugal force forced the uh, hot magma or, or, or liquid uh, within the, uh, the uh, ejection to harden on the outside into a globe, global shape. And inside, the same thing happened, except that the molten material started to push because of the speed and centrifugal force to the sides. And the extra material was forced through uh, holes that opened up in what became the North and South Pole. And then the interior also hardened because of the coldness of space. So what we have is an outer uh, mantle and an inner mantle and in between is this molten material, which is magma uh, that we know of now. And uh, then the continental uh, platforms uh, be, uh, formed on top of this. And the same as above, so below. So we have a hollow space inside the planet. Uh, we have uh, uh, an area of space between the inner mantle and the outer mantle. Uh, and there are tunnel systems and caverns that have opened and formed in between. Uh, and there are many, many uh, civilizations, both in the uh, inside of this uh, planet, as well as in the mantle between the inner and outer sections of the planet. That is awesome. And that's actually how I discovered your work, was looking into the hollow earth, because that's one of my favorite mysteries and possibilities. And I guess the way you describe it, it's almost like, a, the earth is a round lava oreo with like a middle part of lava and then two hard outside edges mm -hmm. is that kind of accurate yes but in the very center where the where conventional science says is the molten core actually is molten material left over uh from this formation of the planet so in effect uh we have uh, uh an an inner earth sun which is just really molten material that's glowing hot. So in the inner earth, it's always light. Um, now, I, I just recently, last month, uh, did some work in Japan. And there I met a scientist from the physics department of Tokyo University, which is considered very elite. 
And he personally told me that this information is known and they have verified it at Tokyo University and they know that it's true, but they're not allowed to reveal this to the public because it would undermine uh, science and biology and everything else that we know uh, in uh, modern science. Right. Yeah, that, that's awesome to hear. I mean, there definitely are huge ramifications. I mean, everything we know about Newtonian physics would be off. Everything we know about gravity and mass would be uh, definitely wrong. We'd have to rewrite all that. But another aspect of this that I thought was really fascinating is if the reptilians went into the inner Earth at this time, th I've heard you say this is where we get the stories of hell and demons below. And, and that sounds pretty interesting, man. Yeah, correct. And you have to remember, for a very, very long time, there was coexistence between Lemuria and Atlantis. Uh, not that it was peaceful. There was a lot of war between them. And in fact, the Indian Vedas, uh, the very ancient documents that talk about uh, history from eons of time ago, they talk about the Vimana craft uh, that were able to fly in the sky and they show and they talk about uh, weapons that were lances that caused mushroom clouds. So it talks about nuclear war yeah. um, between Lemuria and Atlantis and eventually the Lemurians uh, were destroyed. But those who survived went into that tunnel system that I mentioned previously, uh, both into the inner crust of the world and also into the inner earth. And that began the legends of hell and demons underneath the planet, uh, because uh, centuries and millennia after that occurred, uh, the, the humans that were on the surface did no longer had a memory of what the reptilians looked like. So whenever they were uh, seen, uh, they were considered demonic or, or, or the devil underneath the earth. Yeah, man, that's, that's a really compelling thread to me. That, I, I can see the connection there. <clears throat> And another part of the yeah. story. Oh, go ahead. No, no, I'm just I'm agreeing. I, you <laughs> know, if if people knew true world history, which I actually my latest my latest book is called True World History, uh, it would be quite fascinating to them. Yeah, I agree, man. I can't get enough of this stuff. It's it sounds so just different than than what we hear growing up. It's a lot more interesting too. It's pretty fantastical. But another part of the story that I really find fascinating is this thread where. The reptilians started messing with genetics and mixing humanity with various animal DNA. Can you tell us about that? When did that start occurring? After the big war? Well, actually, um, during the height of the war between Atlantis and Lemuria, there was a, a, a period of time where they tried to coexist. And part of that coexistence was to create a third race, which was a synthesis between the mammalian human and the reptilian, androgynous reptilian. And that is why it says in Genesis in the Bible, it says, let us make man in our image. It's all plural. There's no singular God in the Bible, uh, especially if you know how to read the Bible in the original Aramaic and Hebrew forms. All references to the God are plural. And so that is why uh, it was between the reptilians and the mammalians that they mixed the genetics in order to create the human race as we know it now. If you look at the, uh, at the uh, gestational uh, uh, sections uh, in humans uh, in the womb, you see that the first few weeks of, uh, of uh, fertilization uh, this uh, fetus is actually an androgynous reptilian. It doesn't look human at all. Hmm. And it's only after six to eight weeks that mammalian features start to develop uh, in, the, in, the, in the body. Uh, and that's because the DNA is following the sequence in which uh, the, uh, the genetics were, were contributed. Unfortunately, when, when this mixture was created, both the reptilians and the mammalians uh, put in uh, instructions to the DNA to become dominant over the other. And, and that's why, uh, according to the church, we're born in sin, because we're already conflicted uh, when we're born, because we have this conflictive DNA between reptilian and mammalian. And so that's why we have all these psychological issues in humanity now. Uh, you know, uh, humans on this planet are unique because nowhere else is there this mixture between the reptilian and mammalian forms. It's why we have a reptilian brainstem, 
we have a reptilian lymphatic system. Even our heart, even though it's four chambers, has only three uh, arteries feeding into it, which is reptilian. So mm. our bodies are, are generally a foundation of reptilian genetics with mammalian added to it subsequently. Interesting. And I, when I've heard you talk about this, this apparently can also explain the legends of ancient cultures communicating with merfolk, and it can explain Bigfoot. I mean, were these experiments that went along with the creation of modern humans? Well, actually, those occurred after the destruction of Lemuria, when the Atlanteans, who, contrary to New Age belief system, were not very nice people, they had very much interaction with alien species, and they were very much interested in hybridization between human and other forms. So uh, according to what you mentioned, the merfolk uh, are actually a genetic mix between the dolphin and human genetics. Bigfoot is a creation of human with bear genetics. And in history, we have had, uh, for example, a werewolf, and that is a creation between human and wolf genetics, and so on and so on. And uh, many of the anomalous life forms that are seen now and then on the Earth are, uh, uh, let's say, a uh, descendancy of this Atlantean hybridization experimentation. That is so fascinating to me, man. And also, I mean, the Roman culture, they say... Their origin story involves coming from wolves, right? With the Romulus and Remus? Yeah, Rom the twins, Romulus and Remus, uh, the wolf uh, parents. Uh, yes, so some of the story is allegoric. Some of it is legitimate. Uh, but that involved actually the Etruscan people who uh, had their origins in the Arcturus star system. Interesting. So, I mean, does this explain all kinds of these uh, these mythological creatures like minotaurs and satyrs? I mean, were these creations during this testing phase? Uh, correct. And these were representations of the hybridization program of Atlantis. Now, remember, many of these legends come from ancient Greece. And ancient Greece was a colony of the Atlantean Empire, which have eventually rebelled against Atlantis, and there were wars between the Greeks and the Atlanteans. And that led eventually to the story of the Iliad and, uh, and uh, the... Uh, Odyssey? Odyssey, exactly, and all the creatures that were mentioned there. These are based on truth. Interesting. So, f for this kind of stuff, what timeline are we talking about when, when Greece was fighting with Atlantis? This would have been approximately 12,000 B.C. Wow. So... Uh, Oh, go ahead. No, because Atlantis finally was destroyed in 10,500 B.C. Interesting. So, obviously, conventional history puts civilization on the scene with the Sumerians, and not long after the Egyptians, both about 5,000 years ago. They, and they, many say that happened after like a global flood, a catastrophe. I mean, is that part of the story accurate? Or where did these civilizations spring out of? The story of the flood, as it's uh, mentioned in the Bible, and actually in many stories of different civilizations around the world, uh, that is the story of the sinking of Atlantis, which occurred quite rapidly. Uh, Atlantis was destroyed over three basic time periods when they uh, destroyed the morphogenetic grid of the Earth and caused collapse of continents and, and that kind of thing. Uh, but uh, certainly... Uh, Sumer is a, li a little bit different, and I wrote about this in Blue Blood book and in my True World History book. Uh, Sumer kind of established itself overnight. I mean, uh, one time it wasn't there, and all of a sudden it was there with a the high technology. Sumer was uh, based on refugees from the underground of Mars after Mars had the atmosphere and oceans ripped off of it. Over a period of time, the Martians uh, created... Uh, a, a mission to colonize the nearest planet, which was Earth, which was now colonizable. And they landed in Sumer and created a civilization there. The interesting thing is, if you put a Caucasian person uh, in a deprivation chamber where there's no outside influence whatsoever, uh, their biorhythm goes to 26 hours, which matches the day on Mars not the day on the Earth, which is 24 hours. Huh. Wow, that's pretty cool. So, 
these animal hybrid experiments, do, do these explain the different races? I mean, do the, are these genetics still coursing through the Earthlings' blood in different ways, like a different section of the planet? Yes, uh, yes. Uh, but I have to explain that after the destruction of Atlantis, there was a large period of time where civilization kind of fell backwards, more into uh, almost a Stone Age kind of uh, presence. And it was at that time that the various refugee civilizations uh, in, in the galaxy uh, started to come back to the Earth and started to recreate versions of themselves in their own ver way uh, that created the various uh, uh, ethnic groups, uh, various religious groups, etc., that we uh, now extrapolated to what we have now. Right on. That That's... I mean, the story seems to make sense, as, as odd as it is. But can you tell us a little bit about the link between the dolphin genetics and autism? Yeah, that's a whole nother story. Uh, the dolphin species, uh, as you know, they have a higher brain capacity to body uh, capacity, which makes them a higher intelligence than human beings. Uh, I talk about their being brought to the Earth from the Andromeda galaxy, which is the nearest galaxy to the Milky Way, uh, in order to help uh, the destruction of humanity, help with uh, the, the destruction of civilization. Um, and so uh, during, uh, unfortunately, modern times, uh, it was uh, the Illuminati, New World Order, whichever uh, term you want to use, which in the last 30 years or so uh, used dolphin genetics uh, or opened up the dolphin genetics that the Atlanteans experimented with uh, in humanity in order to see who could be a threat to the Illuminati. In other words, those who have a, a dolphin genetics actually have a higher intelligence and higher psychic ability, which is a threat to the Illuminati. So in the late 80s, uh, the Illuminati created a vaccine for newborns, which would actually open up their dolphin genetics. And that is why, since the late 80s, we've had a 300 to 400 percent increase in autism, uh, mostly in the United States, but also across the world. Now, autism, for all intents and purposes, is actually a dolphin intelligence inside a human body. And so that is why they have a difficulty interacting uh, with other people because they're actually trying to communicate in a dolphin format, which is more mental than physical. Uh, and actually, I, I, I worked for several years as a developmental specialist in, uh, uh, in mental health clinics, uh, especially on the East Coast. And so when I worked with dolphin genetics and dolphin frequencies with these people, they were able to communicate in a much better way. Wow. So they're doing that for the people with dolphin genetics. Are they doing any, having other, any other kind of experiments or any kind of effect on other types of genetics other than the dolphin? Yeah, you know, uh, since especially I will say the mid-1950s onward, uh, once the U.S. government had extensive con contact with various alien civilizations, they created a, a lot of underground bases, uh, and they also experimented with hybridization uh, between human and uh, alien, human insect, human animal, alien insect and animal, etc. Every combination you can think of. Uh, one of the most famous um, combinations that actually got out of hand was in the 1960s, the Mothman of West Virginia and Ohio. You might remember that story. Yeah, really. And that was basically a, a genetic mix between human and, and moth, uh, which created this Mothman, which was seen in uh, areas of southern Ohio and uh, certain parts of West Virginia, where the two states meet. And there is an underground U.S. military base and actually a storage facility uh, where they had this creature who unfortunately escaped uh, into the service oh, wow. and created this oh, wow. issue. Man, so if we're talking about the, the common population of the planet, is it safe to say that all of us 
or most of us have some form of animal genetics. I mean, what are the major ones? We talked about the dolphin and, you know, Bigfoot was a bear and maybe the Romans come from wolf. But is there any other, like, what are the major types that are still prevalent in today's population? You know, there are many, and I would say the ones you mentioned are the, are the major ones, but there are also people with lion genetics, uh, people with insect genetics. Uh, there's, a, there's quite a range uh, that go back not only to the Lemurian time period, but also to the current uh, manipulation by the U.S. and other governments uh, who keep this secret and have been doing this for at least 50 or 60 years. Wow, man. So is there a way to tell what genetics we have? Like if I wanted to know what I was made up of? Yeah, well, you know, of course, uh, in my work, I have uh, what we call DNA opening exercises, which I believe uh, you can watch the videos on YouTube. Uh, and I teach you how to open your genetics and explore it yourself to see uh, what you have inside of you. Interesting. Yeah, that, I'm very curious. And I've heard you say that Earth is kind of like the Afghanistan of the galaxy. Can you kind of explain that ah. statement? Okay. Uh, for example, uh, the U.S. Uh, back in 2003 decided that Iraq needed to be, and I quote, liberated, you know, so that it could be free from uh, hostility and, and totalitarianism. Well, out there in this galaxy and even in other galaxies, the Earth is considered to be a very hostile, aggressive planet with a hostile, aggressive species, which needs to be corrected because we are considered to be a threat uh, to the other civilizations that exist in many parts of this galaxy and other galaxies. That is why there is an interest here. Uh, so that is why we see different species, different uh, vehicles, etc., uh, it's a big issue for the Illuminati or the New World Order because they have alliances with some of these groups, but not with all of them. And in fact, I talk, I have spoken about recently and, and several years ago about this massing of a fleet in the Kuiper Belt area, which surrounds our solar system, the border of our solar system. And this is a threat to the Illuminati and in fact uh, is sabotaging them in many ways. And I have spoken about the plan of the Illuminati to have a staged alien invasion, which, in my opinion, is already the process has begun. But after that occurs, uh, and when I think in the next six months to a year, we should see this invasion from the Kuiper Belt. Uh, and this is a huge group uh, amassing of many, many civilizations, both from uh, our universe and others. Uh, who want to change the way things are here. Yeah, that is interesting. So when you look at the power hierarchy on this planet, can you give us some greater detail? I mean, is it all reptilians? Are there different factions fighting? Or are they one unified group against this, maybe this Kuiper Belt group? Well, very interesting question, because the answer is there are so many factions and factions within factions it's almost like a free-for-all at this point, and that is why the Illuminati agenda, which was supposed to be fulfilled two years ago in 2012, has, uh, is still not fulfilled. And now my latest information is that they're trying to do this by 2015, 2016. Uh, so yes, uh, there are many, many factions, many, many groups. Uh, we also have to look at the Fourth Reich, uh, which is based in Antarctica. Uh, which is waiting for the Illuminati to start chaos on the surface of the earth, and then they are going to fulfill their own agenda. Uh, there, there, there's so many things going on from so many different areas. It gets very confusing. <laughs> yeah, I, I would think so. And I, I wanted to hop back to Afghanistan for a second because people talk about there being huge cave systems there. And if you buy into the idea of a hollow earth opening or cavern worlds, does this kind of explain why global superpowers won't ever leave that area alone? Well, it's not just there. I mean, these cave systems are global. They're all over the earth. Uh, they exist under the ocean. They exist everywhere on this planet. Uh, so we can't just say it's Afghanistan or any place else like that. It's, it's just global in nature. Gotcha. It seems like 
they keep these places pretty well guarded, though, right? Or they keep them in turmoil to keep us from really discovering it, don't they? Well, this is especially true in Iraq, uh, because under the city of Baghdad, uh, there are huge stargates, uh, technology that has been there for many, many thousands of years, which enables uh, someone who knows how to use it to actually connect uh, energetically create wormholes from here uh, to any place else in this universe. So those who control that Stargate are uh, ha would have a lot of power. Yeah, And that's why in, in 2003, uh, when the U.S. invaded Iraq, the first thing they did was go right to Baghdad. Uh, they attacked or went right to the museum in Baghdad. They took out all the displays that uh, were involving ancient technology. Uh, they, and, the, and in fact, the museum curator said that the uh, our U.S. Army people who, who went into the museum knew exactly where they were going. They went right to the basement, right to certain areas, like they knew uh, what they had to get and what they had to, uh, you know, confiscate from, from this museum. Um, and they controlled now the stargates that are underneath Baghdad, which were connected to Nibiru, the so-called, uh, you know, rogue planet that goes through our solar system, which, by the way, was destroyed in April 2003. There is no more Nibiru. Wow, 2003, huh? Yeah. What's yes. that in story? Fact, uh, well, the uh, Illuminati uh, had a... Um, uh, technology which they based near uh, 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 Jupiter. Um, it was uh, a particle beam accelerator. And as Nibiru came close between Saturn and Jupiter, they destroyed it. And if you are able to still go back on the internet and see the information of the NASA sun cams, which were cameras that are focused on the sun at that time, let's say April, May of 2003, you will see huge chunks of something uh, headed towards the sun. And that is the remains of Nibiru, which were exploded and, uh, and dispersed. And that is why even to this day, uh, there are huge uh, meteorites and, and, uh, and, and asteroids which are uh, passing by and near the Earth, which are remnants of that explosion. Huh, that's, that's pretty trippy. So I, I want to talk to you more about these underground bases. You kind of mentioned that they've got some secret technology under there in Iraq. The, are these human? Are they reptilian or both? Because I hear conspiracy people talking about underground battles. Is that still going on? Well, you know, uh, quite honestly, some of the conspiracy information is uh, hyped up. <laughs> I believe that. You know, but the truth is, yes, there are uh, battles going on underneath the earth. And, and, and you might remember a couple of years ago, almost every week, there was some kind of mining disaster where miners were killed and never found and the mines collapsed and all this stuff going on. That's really what the battles were about. And that occurred all, especially in Africa, China, uh, the Appalachian area of the United States. Um, that seems to have calmed down a bit. Uh, but uh, remember something, the Illuminati here, which are hybrids of reptilian and human, just as the rest of us are, they're interested in creating a new galactic empire. Oh, okay. which is going to which they want to take over from the original Draco reptilian empire. They want the earth to be its headquarters and then fan out from here. This is interesting, man. I do two shows a week and I cannot remember having connection issues like we're having today. It's well, kind of interesting. Well, Greg, I will unfortunately tell you that every show I do has this issue. Right, that's what you said. Hopefully everything doesn't blow up. But uh, you know, you mentioned okay. in one of your presentations that there is a massive city under West Virginia. Is that right? How can we get into that? What's it like down there? <laughs> well, you're not going to get in there. <laughs> uh, but it is the largest underground city in the world. And you may recall after 9-11 happened, uh, CNN actually uh, talked about it. And they said that it, there was an entrance uh, from both the Virginia and West Virginia. 
And then they specifically mentioned the Greenbrier Resort area in, in, in West Virginia, where there was a major entrance. Um, and they actually said that when George Bush uh, was taken out of Washington, D.C. after the attacks, they said he was taken to this uh, major underground city in West Virginia. And shouldn't we all be glad that should anything happen to the United States, that our government could go underground and still exist? <laughs> How convenient. Yeah, weren't we all happy about that? Yeah. And, uh, man, this is, we're jumping all over the place, but it's so fascinating and so much information that, you know, I just want to get a little piece of all of it. But I heard you say that the elite or the Illuminati, they're dealing with pretty much four or five different alien races in modern times. Can you give us uh, some details on those groups? Yeah, basically, uh, they're dealing with, uh, well, let, let me just say, there are four main groups, I should say categories of aliens, uh, which the uh, Illuminati deal with. One is the tall Nordics or the tall blondes, as they're called. Another is the reptilians. Another is the small grays that you've heard about. And the fourth is the insectoids. And with these are main categories because within these groups are many subcategories. You have to remember that in our, in our galaxy, there are over 100 billion stars. And in our universe, there are between 100 and 200 billion galaxies, each one with at least 100 billion stars. So the enormity of life in our universe is extravagant. You, you, we can't even conceive of it. So there are many, many, many uh, different forms of life. And of course, I gave you the four main kinds, but there are many others as well uh, that exist. You know, there are there are species that look like certain animals. There are species that are etheric. Uh, anything you can think of exists. So our government deals with approximately four to six different races uh, of the categories that I mentioned to you. Uh, but they are aware of many others. Gotcha. So, yeah, yeah I mean, I've had uh, just recently... I interviewed a woman who researchers, researches uh, contactees, and yes, all four of these groups seem to be coming up in people's contact experiences. The ones we hear most often about are the grays and the tall whites, and of course we kind of can we know what the reptilian's role is, but what are the, what's the role of the tall whites or the grays or even the insectoids? Like, Do they all have similar motives, or are they uh, working with the Illuminati or against them? Ha. Well, the answer is D, all of the above, <laughs> uh, because uh, despite any alliances that uh, both the U.S. or Russian or Chinese governments have with these uh, beings, uh, they're deceived and they know that they're deceived. And there is a very tenuous agreement between all of these groups because the U.S. especially has certain agreements and then they find out these agreements are not being honored. For example... You have heard of uh, the animal mutilations which came to the public light in the late 1960s in Colorado. Yes. Uh, yes. And, uh, but what they don't tell the public is that there have been human mutilations that have been uh, discovered all over the world as well. Huh. So there are very hostile groups uh, which do whatever the heck they want and they don't care what the government's uh, agreements are. Uh, and they take uh, human beings. In fact, uh, one of the most uh, horrible human mutilations was found in Brazil, I believe, in the early 1980s, where they found this man along a river. His, all the skin from his face had been removed. His lips had been removed. His genitalia had been removed. Uh, his lymph glands under the arms had been removed. And his body was just left on the banks of this river to be found. Wow. Yeah. Man. And in addition, uh, I know that most people are aware of the so-called Roswell crash in 1947 in New Mexico. Um, and there have been many uh, so-called crashes around the earth at various times and locations. Uh, but on some occasions, some vehicles have been shot at and crashed. Uh, and the, some of these were uh, full-bred reptilian vehicles. And when the vehicles crashed, 
they found human corpses without arms, without legs, without heads, without organs. Obviously, uh, human beings have been taken and harvested for uh, nefarious purposes. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's kind of common knowledge these days. That's uh, that's seems to be the Greys' main motivation. Seems to be abducting people, but um. Yeah, man, we are just breezing through this. I kind of want to catch up to modern times. I mean, so what's what's the situation right now? Do you see the Illuminati are losing control? You mentioned the Kuiper Belt beans being out there. Um, how how is the life going to be for us in the next ten years? You think? Well, that's the sixty-four million dollar question, isn't it? <laughs> it uh, is. But I, I'm willing to take ten percent of the sixty-four million if anyone wants to go there. <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure, I'll split it with yeah. you. Yeah, I'll even take one percent for goodness' <laughs> sake. Anyway, um, the answer is uh, the Illuminati, yes. Uh, they realize that the gig is up. Uh, that doesn't mean that there's going to be love, light, and peace on this planet. Absolutely not, uh, unfortunately, because uh, you may have heard of the uh, Hadron Collider near Geneva, Switzerland. Yeah. Um, and the so-called purpose of it is to find, I uh, quote, the God mind particle. But that's not the reason for it. What they're trying to do is collapse various alternative or parallel universes into this one where the Illuminati have achieved their agenda. Uh, because the looks of it is that in this particular timeline, they're not going to achieve their agenda because they've been sabotaged both from humanity and from outside of this planet. And I, I go again to the Kuiper Belt group. Uh, which have sabotaged the collider in Switzerland. And there's also a collider in Aurora, uh, Illinois, and others around the country. There's one in Texas, etc. And these are designed uh, to create uh, an influx of lower astral entities into into society uh, in order for the Illuminati to fulfill their purpose. Um, The bottom line is, the way I see it, by 2015, 2016, uh, the Illuminati will have already fulfilled their staged alien invasion, and then a real invasion will occur from the Kuiper Belt. These beings in the Kuiper Belt are aligned with the Fourth Reich, which is in Antarctica, which is why the Illuminati no longer allow any information from Antarctica to be in the public news or media. Uh, And uh, my feeling is uh, that the Kuiper Belt beings who are quite advanced and there's there are there are civilizations there we've never even heard of before uh, will be successful and the Illuminati will have to either be eliminated or scattered to other locations. But this planet then will be under the jurisdiction of a Fourth Reich uh, type of environment under the uh, umbrella of these Kuiper Belt beings. Uh, and, uh, you know, you know what that will be like, nobody knows at this point. <laughs> yeah. my, feeling is, my feeling is at some point in the future, linearly, uh, human beings will take their power back and we will become independent. You know, when that happens, it's up to humanity. Unfortunately, Greg, when I look out there at civilization, I see a lot of stupid people, people who believe what the media tells them. They believe in global warming. They believe in all the, you know, the, the, you know, the uh, SARS virus and all these other things that they're told. It's all a bunch of crap. It, 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 It doesn't exist. In fact, an ice age is coming to the planet, not global warming. Uh, so that's why we're seeing all these extremes. This has nothing to do with what the media is telling you. So my advice is to go within, to open up that 90% of the mind that you're not using, the 97% of the DNA that's called junk DNA. Open that up and use it. Uh, because if we take our power back, then the Illuminati and the Kuiper Belt and anything else that's out there will have no power over us. We have, mm-hmm. to, we have our own power. That internal strength. Yeah, man, it's fascinating stuff, and we're kind of getting towards the end of the show here, and for, for a lot of this, I mean, I'm taking your word for it. I mean, it's a tough pill to swallow. It's so unconventional. I mean, I love the stories, but I want people to be able to entertain these ideas, and it is just so foreign from conventional ideas. Some of these secrets seem too big to keep. I mean, is there any evidence you can point to to help sway the skeptics out there? 
you know, Greg, listen to listen to what, what I say. If people don't believe in something, I can show them a living alien in person in front of them and they won't believe it. If you have a knowing and you realize what's out there, you don't need to have physical evidence because you know that it's true. So my job is not to convince people of anything. My job is to just tell them what I know and they can accept it or they can reject it. It's up to them. See? Fair point. Uh, I, I, I say to people, do your own research because what you know, don't take my word for it. Do look at that, look what's out there. The physical evidence is there. You know, the, the monuments on the earth are physically there. Uh, the the genetics of alien intervention in humanity, it's physically there. Just look at how humans gestate in the womb and you can see it. Uh, read the um, the uh, symbolism that's in the Bible. Do not take it literally, but look at the symbolism behind it. Look at the Bible code, which can only be deciphered by computer. These are these are evidence to me. You know, that's why I go all over the earth. I've been to all all seven continents. I've been to almost every con uh, country on this planet to find the real information and I present it to people. But that's all I can do. The the the, the belief, the knowing has to come from you. And and here's what I say. Uh, belief is in the mind. Faith is in the heart. But knowing comes from your soul personality, the depths of you. So go into that and go into your knowing. Disregard the faith and belief because that's superfluous. Go into the depths and the knowing and see who you are and where you come from. Fair point. So it seems like like have you have you had you've had privileged information in your life, of course, but a lot of this is it coming from your own research or is this coming from inside sources or is it a mixture? All of the above, right? Because uh, as you know, my own cousin, my uh, my my great uncle uh, Yakov was the first president of Soviet Union. His son Alexei began the KGB. Mm. So I do have, you know, whether you consider it fortunate or unfortunate, a connection to that. Right. And they have extensively researched the origins of humanity and history, etc. And they have given me this information. Uh, and that's what I present uh, that with, plus my own research, my own mind work, I present to the public. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's, I'm glad you brought that up there at the end, because my uh, audience is always writing me emails. They're very skeptical of any kind of government affiliation. And obviously, you have huge family government affiliations. Does that ever affect you when you're trying to talk about this stuff? It depends where I am, you know. Uh, when I'm in Russia, I'm a superstar, <laughs> you know. Like they, they actually, I had to ask to be run. I actually have been asked to run for president of Russia. Actually, believe it or not. Wow. Um, but I refuse to do such a thing. I have spoken to the president of Iceland. I have spoken to officials in many, many countries, uh, and what they say in public is very different. Than what they know behind the scenes. Yeah, so, and I realize I realize that many people have an issue with any information from the government, and I don't blame them. Mm -hmm. I also have issues with it, but the sources that I have go behind that, uh, and they go to the true history, the information which is not available to conventional media or history, and so I look at that plus my own research, which corroborates that, and that's what I present. And again. You don't have to believe me. Do your own research. Find that for yourself and uh, know from within yourself. For sure. Do you, Here's one more question about this kind of topic. Is Do you ever worry about your safety at all? Because it seems like the elite have killed researchers and journalists for far less. Absolutely. And you know, there have been times when I was very close to death. And there have been times when I said, hey, just kill me because I'm done with all this crap and the sabotage. You know, I'm huh. done with it. You know, and so I use my violet protection. I use all the work that I, I tell people to use in hyperspace. Uh, and here I am. I'm still alive. Now, really, I am attacked almost on a daily basis from many different uh, places. Uh, and that's the truth. I'm sabotaged. You've seen from our own show today how we have been sabotaged on Skype and, and the Internet, where the show has been cut off in many different places. Uh, so, yes, uh, it's, a, it's a constant uh, struggle. It's a constant battle. But we have to decide, are we going to give up or are we going to be victorious? 
Amen, man. Well, that is true. The audience isn't going to notice it very much because I'm going to stitch it together, but I cannot remember a time, honestly, where I've had so many problems with the internet connection and Skype uh, not connecting. It, it, it was fairly strange. I know a lot of shows talk about that and always joke or allude to interference, but hey, I mean, it's it's anecdotal, but we definitely did have more interference than I'm used to, but uh, I really wish we had a little more time to go on to validate some of these stories, but man, I appreciate you sharing them with us. I, for one, would really love to get some evidence of the hollow earth or a city under West Virginia, but I guess they keep that evidence pretty close to the chest, I would say. You know, a lot of people tell me, hey, if I, uh, you know, if I started going to a cave and I started going down, what will I find? You know, look. They're not going to let people in unless they want them to come in. You're not going to just start digging and, and, and say, hey, I found the roof of the underground base. Not going to happen. You know, physical proof of this thing, it's almost impossible to get that. Uh, anyone who does have that physical proof is dead. You know, and that's the bottom line. Hmm. Right on, man. Well, hey, thanks again. Hopefully we can do it again sometime. Before we go, would you like to give the people your website and tell them a little bit about what else you work on? Yes, thank you. Uh, my website is expansions.com. Uh, please go on there. We have a full range of information from history to organic uh, health information, hyperspace information, color therapy, everything you can think of. It's a one-stop shop. Uh, please go on there and, uh, and see what you find. Um, I recently came back from Japan where I studied and looked into the connection of the Emmanuel or Christ figure who went all the way to Japan and I actually found the graves. Uh, so look at the videos online about that. Um, I'm going back to Iceland. I'm going to Poland uh, in the next couple of months. A lot of information coming up that I present to you. Uh, 